um, sealed with the cellophane stuff. I don't know why I started at that end because I'm right handed. Honestly. It's all the excitement, that's what it is. It's like Christmas. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. Now I did order this direct from Dyson, so I didn't expect it not to be sealed. So we still have the security tape on there, so we'll just cut that. There we go. And this should just open up like so. So I'm just going to take a quick picture, so just bear with me a second, just so I have it for the, um, I have my own Facebook group, you see, and um, I like to document stuff like this. There we go. Right, so there we have it. So this is my first Dyson cordless ever. So the first thing we have out is the, um, that's talking about the guarantee, I believe. There we are. It almost looks like a yellow pages cover, doesn't it, on the the book cover of one of those. That's that, and also we have the manual has your register guarantee there as well. That's that. So once again I'll take a picture, I'm sorry about this. There we go. So, first thing we have out the box seems to be the wand. Just pop the packaging off there. Oh, that is a lovely colour, isn't it? Look at that. It's quite thick. I didn't expect it to be that thick. We have the connections in the end there for the for the uh, the powered heads, like the fluffy head and the. Um, the main carpet nozzle. We have the, the male and the female on that end. As you can see there it says Dyson Cyclone V10 Total Clean. Very very nice. Not a single blemish. Very nice. And we have the button there. Oh I didn't expect it to press in that much. That's cool. That's to release the tools. So that's the wand. So next we have the mattress tool, I believe Dyson call this. It's just a big upholstery tool really. That, this is the new design by the way, if you didn't know, of the uh, the release button for the tools. So we have a lint picker there, sort of like a velour strip, and a wide opening. Oops. So, you know, these are quite good quality tools. I know they're expensive, but they seem pretty good quality. So here's the up top tool, I believe Dyson call this. Looks a bit like um you have one of those toilet ducts, you know that you you squirt that chemical round underneath the rim of your toilet. Kinda reminds me of that. <laughs> but anyway, you can angle that different angles. And there we go, so that's that. It's probably not something I'd use all the time, but it's definitely useful. So, let's see, here we have the combination tool and the crevice tool. I love how everything's so nicely packaged. I think this is part of what you pay for sometimes, you know. So, let's see how else we get into this. Oh, yes. Try not damaging the packaging because I like to keep it. It's all part of being a collector, really. So, we have the crevice tool there. Little bleed holes in it. I guess that's to stop it from shutting the motor off when you block the end because of course on these it doesn't take much to stop the machine from running if you block off the suction. Yeah that's the crevice tool, pretty standard looking tool. I mean how else can you design a crevice tool really? So here's the uh, little combination nozzle, we have the little sort of upholstery tool and then you press that and that's your little dusting brush there. It's a bit bigger than I imagined. I'm not sure if they've redesigned that, but I'm sure they were smaller than that button on there again. So, yeah, that's that. What next? Ah, so we have the little... Now, this is an asset, I think. 
if you have one of these cordless Dysons, having a little hose like this to put on the end to use your small tools is imperative, I think, because you just can't get the bulk of the machine into small spaces. So, of course, you won't be able to use the powered heads because there's no electrical connection, but to use the small tools, that's ideal, and it doesn't have to be long because it's a, a handheld machine. But it swivels at this end, which is good, I didn't expect that. Fixed at that end though, and we have the button there. So that's that, it's kind of a nice concertina that, isn't it? Oof. Anyway, um, let's see what we have now. So, we have, I assume, yes, this is the, this is the fluffy head, I think. It's all exciting, isn't it? So, oh, it's quite heavy. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so heavy. Oh, that is very soft. If you've not, if you've not felt one of these, you, I wish you could reach in through the screen and feel that. That's lovely. It's very velvety. So you have carbon fibre, I believe those are. Then you have these, um, I don't know, sort of felt... Um, a felt pad, I guess, on the roller there. And you have a little one at the back to prevent any either spit back or um, anything being missed or to stop it scratching but we do have two wheels there some nice um, sort of velvet strips around the edge so that's the underside there's the main suction channel it seals to the floor between the suction channel here and this velvet strip at the back and the roller and that's what keeps the suction onto the floor because it's an open roller at the front, it doesn't snowplow anything, or that's the idea. But I'm excited to try this, and it's relatively good at articulating. Have the button there as well. It's a bit dusty from the factory, but that's the soft roller head. Nice Dyson brand in there. Or the um, fluffy head, I believe they also call this. So that's that. That's for your hard floors. And then we have the other floor head here. This one's for your carpets, just your combination or multi purpose nozzle. So you can use this on hard floors as well. But I believe that the, um, the fluffy one's a lot better. So you have pretty stiff nylon brish bristles for, the, for cleaning carpets. And you have the carbon fibre ones there for helping pick up on hard floors and the sort of, I believe, I've heard that on the V6 they um, changed the shape of these carbon fibre filaments to an angle to the same direction the brush rotates so that it doesn't wear them out quickly because I believe that they were just straight on the V6 cleaner head and they used to wear out, so that's what I've, I've heard anyway but yeah, it's, I'm not sure if it's meant to sound like that but it's a direct drive, isn't it? So probably. But anyway, that's the that's the roller on there. You have a little squeegee at the back, little felt felt pad at the front there. So if you bang into walls or skirting boards, but yeah, we've got the little wheels at the back there, which is supposed to be like a bit of a ball mechanism, and that articulates quite well. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh dear. Ugh. Need a drink really after all this talking. Right, so here we have the charger. I'm hoping that this charger will reach from the wall where I'm planning to mount it to the uh, skirting board where the socket is. It's a standard jack plug there really. And Dyson charger. So that's that. And I think, have we got anything else in there? Oh yes, of course, we've got about this. We have the mini motorised head for your upholstery and your stairs. This is also a redesign, they've added these stiff nylon bristles rather than the somewhat sparse brushes that they had before on the V6 type. Um, I'm not sure if the V8 came with this type, but they seem quite stiff. We've got a limp picker on the back there as well. 
But yeah, this isn't air powered, this is motorised, so of course you have the connections at the back. And um, that should stay con constant power when you put it on the surface, it wouldn't slow down because, of course, as I said, it's electrically powered. But it pivots, as you can see, to keep contact. So that's the mini motorised head. And finally, before we have the machine, I believe we just have the the wall bracket here, which it comes with the fixing instructions there. And oh, Dyson do supply the fixings. I was told that they don't include the fixings, but it comes with them with this. So I believe you attach that to the wall, and then you attach the the bracket that holds the the Dyson handheld in place and also two of the small tools, the crevice tool and the combination nozzle. So that's the wall bracket, again a bit dusty from being in the box or from in the factory. That's that. So finally, let's just move the packaging out of the way here. Finally we have the machine itself. Oh wow, this is the first time I've actually handled this. So I've not actually seen what it looks like, as in size-wise, or the weight of it. It's very striking looking, isn't it? Look at that. Very nice. So we have the charger port moved to the bottom here. It charges this way, rather than the charger port being at the back there. Or up here, wherever it was. I think it was there. Apparently it was giving people electric shocks. But um, we have sort of status lights on each side. I'm not sure exactly what these do because I haven't read the instructions yet, obviously. We have the filter on the back there, which is a combination of um, um, the pre-motor and post-motor filter. So you wash that as one thing and it does tell you in there that you can wash it. And I believe it's once a month that you are supposed to wash that. So we have the maximum, medium and low setting there. And we have the bin emptying thing here. We push that down and the, <coughs> well the bin's supposed to open but it's always stiff on a new Dyson. Oh it's spring loaded, that's interesting. But, um, <coughs> sorry I've got a right dry throat. There's actually a rubber piece here which wipes this shroud so it's supposed to get all the hairs off it as you empty the bin which is good. So it says on there that it's 20% charged oh yeah 20% charged, charged fully before use it's on there. Not sure how well that's showing but anyway there we have it Alright, so I've shifted all the packaging, but more importantly, got myself a drink so my throat doesn't dry out again. It's all the excitement of this machine, I'm sure that's what it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to remove this uh, sticker here, which covers up the, the trigger. So I'm just going to put it on the, the middle setting, and uh, we'll just quickly turn it on and see if it is actually charged. That was a weird um, sort of reverb at the end. So let's just test the suction here. It'll probably go off, but... So that's the middle setting. Let's try it on max. Well, it's actually really powerful, actually, for a cordless. That's amazing. From first impressions, anyway. Let's just try it on the low setting. Well, there you go. So I'm just going to leave it on setting 2 because there isn't much charge in there. And uh, we'll just connect up the wand here. Oh, that's a nice action, isn't it? And the regular floor tool here. And we'll just give it a quick go on this carpet here. So bear in mind we've got an empty bin here, well, brand new. So we'll just see from this area of carpet what we can pick up. So here we go.
So there we go. So let's just take the the end off there. I assume there's some sort of flap in there. Oh no, it's um, God. I'm so dumb. Obviously, the dirt goes straight up there and up into the the shroud. It enters from the shroud area, so obviously it's not going to fall out. Duh. Anyway, just from that brief test, you see there a bit of hair, and I only vacuumed this carpet last night, so that was literally like, I don't know, 18 hours ago maybe, when we've only got one dog. So there's a bit of hair in there. <laughs>